In this video, I will talk about or less asymptotics in Stata. Or less asymptotics means what happens with the properties of the estimator when the sample size grows large. So before you watch this video, make sure that you have watched my other video called or less asymptotics. So let's go ahead and get started. I have opened up the program here and I have selected it all and executed it by running it. And here are the results. So for this, you will need to download the file wage1.dta and put it in the directory of where it's on your computer and you will be able to uh, run or do the program. So as I said, we will talk about or less asymptotics and basically we will talk about what happens to the standard errors um, when the sample size uh, grows large. So for this we will use um, a wage example and we would be running a regression model with a full sample. So here we have a regression of wage on education, tenure, and experience. So once we run this regression, here are the results. And for this, we would concentrate on the coefficient of experience and then its standard error. And um, so this is the standard error. Uh, so we would be um, basically putting it uh, in, in um, generating a variable called standard error one. We would be picking up the standard error and if we're displaying it, this is the number that we get. Well, the standard error is exactly the standard error that got picked up from the regression output. And the other thing that we want to um, uh, store is the uh, sample size. So here we can generate uh, N1, we would call this uh, sample size N1, E of N, um, and then we can display it and we see 526. So 526 is the number of observations. So again, we want to store the standard error one. Uh, so that would be the standard error of the uh, coefficient on the experience and then the sample size for this regression. So now let's just for illustrative purposes, run the same regression we have of the sample. And so we are running the same regression if uh, the sample size is basically, if n is anything less than half of the uh, sample. So n is 526. So for this one, we would run it only with the 262 observations. So we have half the sample and we want to see what happens with the standard errors. So now we're looking at the standard error for the coefficient on experience and we see that actually with fewer observations we have uh, a larger standard error here. So we can do the same exercise by just picking up the standard error for experience. Uh, we will call it S2 and we can display it, see that it's exactly the same number. And now we can also store the N2, uh, which is the number of observations, EN. And by displaying it, we see the same number as it's right here. So now let's form the ratios of the standard error 1 and standard error 2. And we see that's the ratio of 0.62. And we now can also display the square root of the reverse of the n ratios. So square root of n2 divided by n1. And we see that this is 0.70. So it's about the same ratios. So what we are seeing here is that as the sample size increases, the standard errors change at the rate of 1 divided by the square root of n. Um, so basically what happens here is that with larger sample size, standard errors would be smaller, leading to more, generally more significant coefficients. So we see that as the sample size doubled from you know, half the sample to the full sample, we actually see that the standard error would, would be only 62% of what was the, the, sample, uh, the standard error for the sample with half the size. So again, doubling the sample size led in this particular case to 
62% uh, uh, of the standard error. So in general, that would lead to more significant coefficients uh, when we increase the sample size. Uh, though in this particular case um, that we see here, uh, that uh, not, did not exactly happen. But in general, with larger sample size, uh, we would see uh, more significance in, in the coefficients. So that's all I wanted to cover here. Thanks for watching.